Hi, I'm Jo from JH Leather, and in this Be The Maker video, I'll be showing you how to create your own square rage belt. Let's get started. So we can get our straps ready by first cutting our backing strap and then a strap for our shape. We can then add half an inch or 12 millimeters to that and then cut the strap that's gonna be the top of our belt. Once we have those cut out, we can then do some splitting. So our backing needs to be about two millimeters thick. And the top part of our belt needs to be just under or around one millimeter. You can then set your strap cutter three eighths of an inch or nine millimeters smaller than your backing piece and cut another piece of leather using some scraps that we have split. And that's going to be the filler. And that also needs to be around the two millimeter mark. We can then split down our shape strap to around three millimeters thick. And we're gonna start getting that together. So what we're gonna do is draw on our desired points. Now for me, that is going to be an egg point and I'm gonna draw that on one end and cut that out. Once I've done that, I am then gonna mark a line three inches into the middle and then a further three inches past that. And then square the end and then cut another point to match the original one that I've done. Once we've got that cut out, we can grab a number one edge tool and edge all around the grain side before marking a quarter inch line all the way around the back. And if you need to, you can go over that line with some pen just to make it a bit clearer for you to see. We can then stain the edges of our shape. We're also gonna stain a little bit in towards the middle of the strap, just where we've done our quarter inch line to. And that's just to cover up any parts of it that will be seen once it's actually stitched onto the belt because we have split that down. And you can then rub that in. Once you've done that, what we're gonna do is do a crease line all the way around our shape. And then we can apply some tokenol and rub that in and get some really nice polished edges. What we're gonna do now is actually put some reinforcement tape on the back. Now this is just nylon adhesive and there'll be a link in the description as to where you can get that from. And we're just gonna put that on the back of our shape. And we're gonna shape that around the points as well. We can now draw on our guidelines for our crew punch to make sure we get that nice and central in the strap. And then using the appropriate size crew punch for our buckle, we can punch that all the way through. We're just gonna put that to one side now as we get on and set up the main part of our belt. So we're gonna grab our backing and square the end first. And then we can cut that and draw on our point. So for me, I wanted to do a bridal point because I find this is more aesthetically pleasing when doing a raised belt. However, that's just my opinion and you can do whatever you want. Once you've marked that on, you can then trim that down. And we're then going to mark the holes onto our belt. And the template I'm using here, if you are interested, can be purchased from my store, which will be linked below in the description. You can then just use a pen to make those holes a bit more clearer. And we're going to mark the overall length of the belt. Now I'm making this for me, so I'm going to do 34 inches and I'm gonna draw a mark where the ruler ends and that is from the center hole from the ones that we just marked. We're then gonna take our chosen buckle and place that along that line. And we're gonna mark where the actual buckle tongue sits because that is where we want our belt to be cut. You can then even that up with a set square and then trim all the way along. And then what we're gonna do is mark on roughly where this shape is going to sit onto our main belt. And 
And we're gonna mark this because we don't want to have the filler go under where our buckle is. We can then set our dividers to three millimeters or one eighth of an inch and draw a line down both sides of our belt and follow that with a pen before putting on some more nylon reinforcement tape. Once we have put that on, we can then use a number one edge tool and edge around the grain side of our belt. And we're gonna mark on where that tape sits and we're just gonna edge up to there. We can then put some stain on and get that polished in. And we can now get our filler prepped. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna copy over the tapering from our belt. and then trim that down to size. So I'm just going to reapply my pen mark for the shape and then measure out the filler. And we can then just square that and cut along there with our knife. What we're going to do next is skive the end down to nothing so there isn't a lump where that ends. And we can now start gluing. So we're going to put glue on both the filler and onto our main belt. I am just going to use an air gun just to help my glue go off. And then once tacky, you can glue the filler onto the main part of the belt. We can now glue the filler and our top piece of leather. And we want to make sure that we get glue all the way around that filler to make sure everything sticks down nicely. When ready, we can then glue the top piece of leather onto the middle of the filler. And then using a bone folder, we're going to shape our leather around the filler. To get that extra crispy, what we're going to do is use a single crease, which has been warmed up on a crease heater, and then once again go around that filler just to get that nice sharp edge. So you should now have something that looks a little like this. The next thing to do is to do our stitch marking. We want to get that as close into the edge of our filler as possible. And we're going to go all the way around. Now, when it gets to the tapered end, what you can do is use a smaller two tooth iron if you have one, but if you don't, you can just use your normal pricking iron at an angle to go around these places. And by doing our stitch marking before we do any trimming, this is gonna make sure that our top piece of leather is nicely stuck down onto the rest of our belt. Now we have done our stitch marking, we should have something that looks a little bit like this. And what we're gonna do next is actually trim away the excess of that top piece of leather. So what we're gonna do is put our filler up against an item that is about the same thickness, which for me is my cutting board. We're just gonna trim off all that excess. And what you can do now is use some crepe rubber and just rub the edges to get rid of any excess glue. We're then going to grab our pattern and once again, mark on our holes. Once we've done that, what we're actually going to do is mark a divot area where we can cut out a bit from the end of our belt, which is what's going to help our buckle tongue to sit nice and flush with the leather. So we're just going to do that with a crew punch. And once you've done that, you can see our buckle now fits nice and snugly with the rest of our belt. We can put that to one side and then we're going to double hand stitch all the way around our belt. 
Now to start with on this one, because this is just decorative stitching and it's not a strength thing, you can just start without doing a back stitch. Now to make this easier for yourself, what we can do is actually use multiple lengths of thread. So for me, I like to take a double arms width because that is the most amount of thread that I'm comfortable with using without it all getting in the way and just flapping around and being a nuisance. When we do get to the end of that thread, what we're gonna do is do one and a half back stitches and trim them off. And then we're just gonna start straight away with our new thread. Now, once you've finished stitching all the way around about, you should have something that looks a little bit like this. And what we're gonna do is grab a bone folder and just rub that along the stitches just to flatten them out. Once we've done that, we can then sand the edges. Now I am going to be using my burnishing and sanding machine that I got from Jess Woods, which there is a link in the description below if you're interested in one of those. And as you can see, that's got our edges nice and even. we can then use our number one edge tool and edge all the way around the new grain side of our belt. And then we're going to do some finishing touches. So we're gonna restain all around the belt. And then polish the edges. Before applying some Tolkanol and giving the edges a final polish to get them looking really nice, shiny and smooth. What we're going to do next is just crease the edges of our belt, both on the top side and on the underneath. And then we can start to attach our buckle shape. So we're going to hold that on where it needs to be and mark where we can get our stitches to, which is going to be as close to the buckle as possible. And then we're going to transfer that to the other side of our shape with our set square and with our divider set to three millimeters. What we're going to do is draw a line between the two. Now, a little later on, I decided to use a metal loop for this. So if you're gonna do that, you would want to mark around that first. You can then skive the edges of the shape down to half thickness on both ends. And then you can remove any fluffy bits with your knife. Before putting glue on both sides of this and onto the end of the belt. Now what you can do, you can also rough the area up here, which will help the shape to stick a bit better, which is what I should have done on this one. Once the glue has gone tacky, you can then stick your shape in place along with your loop if you're using a metal one. So you can see I've got this all stuck together with the glue and what I'm gonna do, like I said, I didn't decide to do the metal loop until later, is mark either side of where the metal loop is going to sit. And then I'm gonna stitch mark between those points. So there we a gap in our stitching. If you are using a normal loop, then I do have a video all about looping, which will be linked in the description below. And then you can just do your stitch marking along these lines that we have put in. 
because I have an egg point on mine, what I'm going to do is actually stitch mark from the center of that point up into where I want my stitches to finish to make sure that that starts and finishes in the center. Once you've done that, you can then put your loop back in place, or if you are using a leather loop, you can now tack that in. And now we can start stitching the shape on. So because, like I said, I've got this metal loop, what I'm going to do is stitch on front of that first. So usually I would start with two back stitches and I did on this, but in hindsight, you only really need one back stitch if you have three stitches in total, just so that when you do your back stitching to finish, everything will have two sort of lets of thread over rather than the three which my center stitch did have. If you've got four stitches in front of your loop, however, you can do two back stitches to start because you're going to finish with one and a half so that everything will look the same. And once you've got the top part of your belt stitch, you can then stitch around the bottom part of your shape. And again, we're going to be using double hand or saddle stitch method for this. And here I am starting with two back stitches because I will be finishing with one and a half on the other side. And so these two sides will now both match. Now, once you have finished your stitching, we can start to do our final finishing touches, which is going to start by re-staining around that buckle shape. Once we've done that, we can then use a bone folder just to rub those edges nice and shiny. And we can also apply some Tolkanol here just for the extra sparkle. And now we're going to recrease all the way around the shape on both the front and the back part of our belt. And then the final thing to do is even up our holes from earlier just to make sure that they are in the center of our belt and then punch these. And you should now have your belt looking a little bit like this one. So that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed watching and if you did, please click the thumbs up button and if you haven't already, please subscribe for more videos and tutorials because that really helps grow the channel. If you would like to support us further, then I have just released my new Be The Maker line of merchandise, which is going to be linked at the end of this video and in the description. So thank you very much for watching and I shall see you in the next video.